We've reflected over these first two weeks of the waiting that is involved in this season of Advent. And this theme is again reiterated in the readings this week, in a special way in our second reading from the letter of St. James, when we hear that urgent call, be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. St. James gives the example of a farmer. Not many of us are farmers in this day and age, but that example shows us how we need to be trained in this practice of waiting and how important it is in our spiritual life. Because there will be times when we will not feel God's consolation or his presence. There will be times that we will pray and God will not answer us in the way that we expect him to do so. And if we are not patient, then we will soon despair and we will lose that solace and that peace that our faith is meant to fill us with always. If we are not patient, you and I will easily become agitated because things are not the way we want them to be. And we'll miss all the opportunities that God has in our life today in the mystery of the ways that he has permitted all things to be. Because it's only when we are patient with a true longing and anticipation that we can then know the fullest joy when that waited for event occurs. And this, of course, is so dramatically expressed in our gospel today. John the Baptist is the greatest of all the prophets. He is the last of the prophets. And so he symbolizes all of their longings, their waiting, and their patience. We are told that he is now in prison. And he who has identified Christ as the one, the Lamb of God, he who baptized him in the Jordan and saw the dove come upon him and identify him as the beloved son of the Father, now he must be tempted to some uncertainty and maybe doubt. And so he sends his disciples to ask the Lord, are you the one who is to come or should we wait for another? Jesus responds, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. This is a clear answer. Jesus says, tell him I am the one, the Messiah, about whom when those things would happen that was predicted in our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now we aren't told if the disciples, if John ever hears that response, but let's assume that they do tell him. Can you imagine the joy that John now has? And the same joy is meant to be had by you and me. This third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, comes from the Latin word rejoice, the first word in the entrance antiphon for today's Mass. And so the question we ask ourselves as we continue this waiting is, what is it that we rejoice in? What is it in which we place our hope so that we can then have joy when that hope is satisfied? Sadly, we place our hope in so many things. Some are good. We might hope for economic or political or personal achievement or success. We might hope for some happiness or some healing or some comfort or peace. <laughs> Those things may or may not come. Our hope is to be placed in one thing and in one person, in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is the one who has promised to come to save us, and he is trustworthy. He will always keep his promises to us. And so now we continue in this season of waiting and hoping and of rejoicing. And we do so always in a perseverance in prayer. Because it is then in our waiting that we will know the satisfaction of our longings and all of our hopes and desires. Let us do that, especially over these next 10 days, 
so that we will then be prepared well as we continue this profound waiting for the celebration of Christmas, but most importantly for the fulfillment to which Christmas points and in which we have our hope in the final coming of Christ.